Hello, guys. Good evening. Good evening. Hello, guys. teacher. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. How are you doing today, guys? I am good. Fantastic. I'm really happy to hear that, Byron. Very good. Yes. Awesome. Awesome, Byron. Muy bien. ¿Qué tal, guys? ¿Cómo están? Estoy muy contento de estar con ustedes otra vez. Gracias, de verdad, por su presencia en la clase. Recuerden que vamos a estar aquí ahora y también el día de mañana. Ok. I just wanted to remind you guys about that. Because sometimes we, we forget about these kind of things. So remember that we have the class today and we also have the class tomorrow. Ok. At the same time from 8 to 9. Ok. Ok, teacher. Very good. Very good, guys. So how is your day going? Are you guys tired? Are you guys happy? What can you tell me about your day? What was it like? What did you guys do today? Did you do something interesting? Like maybe you went to, um, to the movies or maybe did you went for a trip somewhere? Or no? Solo trabajar. For me, for me teacher, uh, is very interesting. But a good time um, uh, um, with my mother and my sister. Okay, very good. So you spend time with your mother and your sister, Iris? Yeah, okay, yes. Okay, very good. Very good. It's really good to spend time with the family. That's good. That's something really important, right? I think that... The time that we spend with family is like the best time, uh, the best investment that we can do. So that's good. Very good. What about the rest? What did you do today, guys? Anything that you would like to share with the class? Don't be shy. Don't be shy, guys. We need to talk, okay? Do you know what chai means? Chai. ¿Alguien sabe? <ríe> no saben qué es chai. Tímido. Yeah, Tímido, claro. correcto, eso. Ahí mm. está. No, eso. Ahí está, muy bien. Tímido. There you go. Okay, there you go, Juan. Okay, so Marisela said that she went to the bank and she is exhausted. Okay, I can imagine. I can imagine, Marisela, because going to the bank, it can really... <ríe> It's, it's really tiring sometimes because you have to go and you have to spend like two hours so they can finally assist you. So I, I know that's really bad. I don't like going to the bank. Personally, I just prefer to do uh, everything online, okay? I just, use the, I just use the app, I use the website. I try to avoid going to the bank. Good evening. Good evening, Sophia. How are you doing today? I'm fine, teacher, and you? Fantastic. Well, I'm happy to hear that, and I'm fine. Thank you so much for asking, Sofia. Thank you. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, Jacqueline. How are you? I'm very sick. I I took medicine, or I drank medicine. You took? But, um, okay, but I don't feel better so. i see well that's that's too bad i'm really sorry to hear that jacqueline hopefully you can get better okay and i think that that is something that is uh, going on uh, these days it seems like everybody is sick these days i don't know why it seems like everybody has a cough everybody is uh, with a runny nose so you just need to take some medicine and hopefully you will feel better. Sí, parece que en estos días a todos nos estamos enfermando, ¿verdad? No sé si, si a ustedes yes, ya... <laughs> no sé si ustedes ya se enfermaron, pero all, yo... All my, all my family. All family, okay. All your family. Yeah, so that's, that's something that is going on these days. 
Actually, the so same thing happened. Maybe, maybe, teacher, it's for the weather in the region. It could be. It could be. Yes, some people uh, say that it could be because of the weather, because it's changing. Uh, you know, we are moving from basically, let's say, winter uh, to um, summer. So that, that could be the reason why. Sí, parece que todos eh, como que nos está dando o tenemos a alguien que the se winter, ha enfermado. Summer. That is correct. That is correct, Juan. So, así, pare así parece. En mi caso también. Yo, yo estuve enfermo hace poco, como unos tres días quizás. Y también acá en la familia hubo más personas que se enfermaron. Así que parece que a todos nos está dando, ¿verdad? Quizás es una nueva ola de, tal vez sea COVID, puede que sea eso. Me too, teacher. Okay, so you as well, Sofia. So what kind of symptoms did you have, Sofia? What were your symptoms? Did uh, you have? I have, uh, I don't know, how do you say <laughs> congestional? Oh, so you were congested. Congested and it does, how do you say? Okay, and I had a cough. Cough. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. I okay. had a cough. Uh -huh. okay. Eso fue mi síntomas, teacher. Very good. Okay, oh. very good. Thank you, Sofia. Okay, nice. Maybe Thanks. COVID. <laughs> Maybe COVID, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe it was COVID. Yeah, I, I think that probably uh, that's what is going on these days, COVID. So, and yes. my brother and my mother, too. <laughs> they, okay, so they were mm -hmm. sick, too. I see. Yeah, so that's that's what is going on. I don't know. Uh, that's uh, happened. <laughs> I see. Okay, very good. Thank you so much, Sophia. So yes, if you want to say, guys, let's say that you can say, I have a cough. Okay, I have a cough. And if you want to say it in the past, then you can say, I had a cough. Okay? I have, I had a cough. Uh -huh. Entonces eh, decimos eh, yo tengo tos o yo tuve tos, ¿de acuerdo? Así lo decimos. Y eh, por ejemplo, si quieren decir, eh, vamos a ver, que tenían fiebre, eh, you say I had a fever. I have a fever. Correct. A fever. Correct. There you go. Okay. Así que aquí estamos aprendiendo, ¿verdad? Vamos a utilizar el pasado para hablar acerca de nuestros síntomas que tuvimos en el pasado. ¿Ok? So, like in this case, I had a cough, I had a headache, um, I was vomiting, okay, in case that you have vomit, or I threw up, sí, esa es otra forma de decirlo, de vomitar, throw up. So we have different expression, guys, that we can use, so we can talk about that, okay? So, fever, fever, fever. 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 That would be F yeah. as in Frank, Fever. E as in Echo, V as in Victor, E as in Echo, R as in Romeo. Okay? Fever. Se lo voy a escribir en el, en el grupo por si acaso nos queda alguna duda. Ahí está. Ahí se los mandé a todos. Eh, in, another, in another case, uh, I can say I feel dizzy, right? That is correct. Yes. So I feel dizzy or I was dizzy. I was dizzy, okay. Mm -hmm. It's both, yes. it's, a, it's a little bit similar. Or can Sorry. be the same, or Excuse can be me? the same, both. Uh, yes, it depends uh, if you are feeling dizzy at this moment or if you were dizzy oh. in the past, okay? Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, Joel, uh, go ahead. Can you spell cough, please? Cough. Yes, that would be C as in Charlie, O as in Oscar, U as in uniform, G as in girl, H as in Henry. Okay, I'm going to write it down. Cough. So I had a cough. I had a cough. Así, ahí se los acabo de mandar. Para que ustedes lo tengan. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. You're welcome, okay? So yes, I think that these are really important things, guys. 
and we can use the, the topics that we are learning these days so you can talk about these things, okay? Like in, like Sophia, right? She was saying that she had a cough and she also said that, eh, bueno, ya no me acuerdo cuál fue el otro síntoma que dijo, pero <laughs> así lo podemos utilizar, ¿verdad? Podemos eh, utilizar este tipo de cosas para hablar de síntomas o cosas importantes, ¿de acuerdo? Okay, so guys, uh, do you have any questions at this time? Anything that you would like to say? Anything that you would like to share with the class before we start? Okay, no questions. Very good, very good, guys. All right, so yesterday, uh, guys, we had some practice. We were practicing. Uh, we were talking about the simple past for the verb to be and also for other verbs, okay? So I send you today, I send you the presentation and I also send you another, uh, a, an additional uh, information about some regular verbs, okay? So you can check it out. And well, there is also, there are like four rows. Uh, the first one is for the verb in the present. Then you have the pronunciation and then uh, you have the verb in the past and the past participle, okay? So you can check it out if you wish. De acuerdo, guys. Eh, entonces, bueno, para el día de ahora vamos a ver un tema nuevo. Eh, para los que acaban de llegar, solamente recordarles que mañana vamos a tener clase, ¿ok? ¿Por qué va a ser así? Tenemos la clase mañana porque empezamos el día martes. Las clases normalmente son de lunes a jueves, ¿correcto? Pero como en esta ocasión empezamos el martes, vamos a, es como que movimos el horario, ¿de acuerdo? Entonces va a ser de martes a viernes, solamente esta semana. Creo que para la otra semana ya vamos a estar normal. Va a ser de lunes a jueves, ¿ok? A menos de que pasara algo extraordinario, digamos. Que suspendan las clases o algo por el estilo. De lo contrario, pues va a ser de lunes a jueves, ¿de acuerdo? Ok, guys. So, for today... Eh, ok, I, wa I want to share the presentation with you. Give me just a second here. Bueno, vamos a ver por acá. Bueno, el día de ayer nos quedamos en esta parte y yo quería mostrarle algunos ejemplos adicionales acerca de el pasado de was and where and also uh, some additional information, guys, just for you to know, ¿ok? Eh, porque creo que algunos querían un poco más de ejemplos, ¿de acuerdo? Para poder eh, estar más familiarizados con el, el tema. Ok, so I have some examples, some more examples for the past using the verb to be, ok? So as you can see, we have uh, this one that says I wasn't skinny, ok? Entonces es como yo no era eh, delgado, I was fat, ok? That would be the opposite. Then we have the next example that says she wasn't that shy, ok? Shy, aquí tenemos esta palabra. Esto es tímido. ¿De acuerdo? Shy. She wasn't that shy. Ella no era tan tímida. Ella no era tan tímida. O no fue tan tímida. Ese es el significado. Ok, then they weren't guilty. Ok, ellos no eran culpables. ¿De acuerdo? Aquí tenemos eh, esta oración. Si ustedes recuerdan, para they, we y you, utilizamos were. Ok, were. They weren't guilty. They weren't guilty. They weren't guilty, yes. Okay, then the next example says the movie was very predictable. Okay, la película fue muy predecible. Okay, recuerden de que dijimos ayer, otra vez, dijimos ayer que was and were era para hablar de cosas como de un estado en el pasado, ¿de acuerdo? Algo que fue o que estuvo en el pasado. Entonces acá, Esto significa que la película fue muy predecible, ¿ok? Es cuando ya, ya hemos visto muchas películas, nosotros decimos, no, esta película ya sé lo que va a pasar, ¿ok? Predecible. So, predictable, ¿ok? We have more vocabulary, guys, that we are going to add. I want you to try to remember the vocabulary so we can use it in the future, ¿ok? That's really important, too. Ok, the next example says, that car wasn't that expensive, okay? 
Entonces, eh, acá lo que dice es que ese auto o ese carro no era tan costoso. Tan caro. Tan caro, correcto. Very good, very good. So that is correct. Así que en este caso, guys, cuando ustedes vean eh, este tipo de estructura, donde tengan that y luego un adjetivo, en este caso expensive, es un adjetivo. ¿Y qué es lo que es un adjetivo? Un adjetivo es lo que describe una cualidad de un nombre. ¿Ok? Como expensive, ship, tall, short, skinny, shy. Todos esos son adjetivos, ¿ok? Porque describen una cualidad. Entonces, en este caso, that expensive es como decir, no era tan caro, ¿ok? No era tan así como tan, tan exageradamente caro, ¿ok? Then we have the next example that says, you weren't my boss. You weren't my boss. Entonces, tú no eras mi jefe o tú no fuiste mi jefe. And then the next example says, he wasn't outgoing. Okay, so we have outgoing persons and we have introvert persons, okay? Outgoing is somebody that is the opposite to a shy person. It's somebody that talks a lot, that really likes to socialize with other people, okay? So that's the, the opposite. De acuerdo, guys. Y por último, el último ejemplo que tenemos acá dice, we weren't that smart. Okay, otra vez lo mismo. That y un adjetivo. Entonces estamos diciendo que no éramos tan inteligentes. Inteligentes. Correcto. Very good. Very good job, guys. Ok, so, solamente eran como unos ejemplos adicionales que yo quería mostrarles a ustedes, porque yo sé que algunos querían cómo revisar eh, más ejemplos, ¿de acuerdo? Entonces tenemos todas estas posibilidades. Podemos hablar acerca de alguien, de algo, y cómo era en el pasado, ¿ok? Esto ya lo vimos, eran las preguntas. Eh, por acá tenemos preguntas utilizando siempre el verbo to be, pero en este caso son eh, yes, no questions, ¿ok? So the first one says, were you shy when you were in high school? ¿Ok? Entonces dice, ¿eras tú eh, tímido cuando estabas en bachillerato o la secundaria? And then we can say, yes, I was. Or no, I wasn't. Okay, that is going to be the answer. Yes, I was. No, I wasn't. Or no, I was not. It depends, okay? Then the next one says, where do you fit? Okay, esto es para decir si estábamos en forma, okay? To be fit. Fit is somebody who is in good shape, okay? Then the answer, yes, I was. No, I wasn't. Uh, then the next example says, uh, were you talkative when you were a kid? Esto talkative es eh, si, nos, si nosotros hablamos bastante, ¿de acuerdo? Una persona que habla bastante. So were you talkative when you were a kid? Yes, I was. Or no, I wasn't. I was shy. I didn't like to talk to other people because I was very shy when I was a, a little kid. Y por último dice, were you good at math? ¿Ok? Entonces, eh, otra cosa, un, un pequeño tip que les quería dar. Eh, cuando queremos decir que somos buenos haciendo algo, nosotros, nosotros decimos, eh, I am good at. ¿Ok? For, for example, you can say, I am good at uh, playing the guitar. Or I am good at uh, English. ¿Ok? Estamos diciendo, yo soy bueno en esto. Yo soy bueno para las matemáticas. Soy bueno para el inglés. Entonces, esta es la estructura que ustedes quieren usar. I am good at something. Or they are good at something. ¿Ok? Bueno, esta ya es una pregunta de información, si ustedes se fijan. Uh, dice, were you good at math? Eh, bueno, usted, ustedes pueden decir, yes, I was. No, I wasn't. Y si quieren, pueden agregar más información, como en este caso, que dice, I sucked at math when I was in high school, ¿ok? Yo era malísimo en matemáticas cuando estaba en, la, en el bachillerato. Bueno, entonces, quiero ver. Bueno, estos son más ejemplos acerca de eso. Ok, así que no sé si tienen alguna duda, guys. Solamente les quería mostrar unos ejemplos como para reforzar, para que ustedes vieran también otras posibilidades. 
pero no sé si tenemos alguna pregunta antes de que avancemos con el siguiente tema. I have a question, teacher. Okay, well, go ahead. In the sentence number two, uh -huh. it, it say, I, she wasn't that skinny, that shy, perdón. Uh -huh. eh, ¿Por qué le pones that? Este, no, no entiendo qué quiere decir that ahí. Mm, sí, okay, okay, very good. So this is something that I was explaining just a moment ago, Joel. Uh, so okay. when you say something like this, so when you say he eats or he wasn't that, and then an adjective, like in this case, eh, cuando usamos esto, Joel, es como que estamos diciendo, él no era tan tímido, ¿ok? Eh, puede ser otro adjetivo, otra cualidad. Eh, she wasn't that tall, ¿ok? Y en ese caso estamos diciendo que ella no era tan alta. Simplemente lo que cambia es el adjetivo, la cualidad que usted está describiendo. Entonces aquí puede ser cualquier otro adjetivo. Puede ser shy, puede ser talkative. Así. She wasn't that talkative. Ella no era muy, eh, digamos. She wasn't that angry. She wasn't that angry. Ella no estaba tan, no era tan enojada. O no estaba tan enojada. Entonces, eso es lo que significa. Ok, gracias. ¿Y qué otros significados puede tener that en otro tipo de oraciones si no hay un, este, como, como era un, un T? Lo angry, ahí se me fue. Uh -huh. Angry es, es enojado. Un... un adjetivo. Sí, no. Ah, vaya, ajá. Si no hay un adjetivo después de that, ¿qué significado puede tener that? En algunos casos, eh, that es como eso, o también en otras ocasiones es que. Entonces, dependiendo del contexto, eh, puede tener otros significados, Jacqueline. Ajá, porque yo lo manejaba como que, entonces por eso cuando usted hizo la traducción, eh, como que me perdí un poco, pero ahorita que ya lo explico ya me quedó claro. Correcto, sí. You're welcome, you're welcome, Jacqueline. That is the reason why I wanted to explain this, because I know that eh, pues nosotros por lo general estamos familiarizados con that como que o eso en algunas ocasiones pero en este contexto cuando estamos utilizando that y después un adjetivo en ese caso, en ese caso eh, significa como que no era tan ok, so that is the, the difference in this case guys Just, uh, so I, have know. Any, I, have, I have any question about that because mm -hmm. I know that is for example uh, esa, eso I can mm -hmm. say that that uh, that car is mine, mm -hmm. right? It's correct, right? That is correct. Yes, that is correct. Mm -hmm. But as you can see in this case, uh, that it goes before a noun. Okay, you are saying that yes. car is mine. Okay, so car is the noun in this case. It's the subject. Okay. 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 So that is the reason why it's different. Así que tenemos esos otros casos como el que dice Juan, guys. Eh, that car is mine, ¿ok? En este caso, that no está antes de un adjetivo, sino que es antes de un nombre. Es un nombre común, que en este caso es un carro. Entonces allí yeah. tiene otro okay, significado. It's, uh, it's fierce, right? You have to put fierce. The car is mine. Mm -hmm. That car is mine, yes. Esta sería como la estructura... Eh, para lo que usted está diciendo. Yeah. Entonces, en este caso, significa ese carro es mío. Está funcionando de una forma diferente. Recuerden, guys, que, bueno, eh, no sé si ustedes ya lo han visto, pero las palabras pueden tener diferentes funciones, ¿ok? A veces las palabras pueden funcionar como un nombre. En otros casos, eh, los verbos pueden eh, cambiar no ser verbos, sino que ser nombres o ser adjetivos, por ejemplo. Entonces, eh, dependiendo del contexto, las palabras toman una función diferente. Eh, no es tan importante como saber esas reglas, porque nosotros eh, lo que queremos es comunicarnos, ¿verdad? Queremos poder hablar y expresar nuestras ideas. Eh, pero sí, en algunos casos, pues eh, sí, es como que toman diferentes funciones, ¿de acuerdo? Pero eso no es como lo que quiero yo que ustedes sepan. Lo que necesitamos saber es qué es lo que estamos diciendo. ¿Ok? 
Ok. Uh -huh. Así que sí, en ese caso, guys, eh, bueno, si está al principio, aquí es eso. Acá es, es como que tan, ¿de acuerdo? She wasn't that angry. Ella no era tan enojada o no estaba tan enojada. Y así. Porque está precedido eh, de un adjetivo. ¿Ok? Ahí esa es la clave. Ok, guys. Is it clear? Do you have any questions about this? Because if you have questions, you can you can say it. Okay, that's pro that that is not a problem. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and say it. Estamos bien? Everything okay, Coach? Exactly. Okay, very good. Thank you, guys. Thank mm -hmm. you. But uh, I have another question. Okay. okay. Uh, in the case when they say uh, he and she is wasn't right. Mm -hmm. And you and we is different, it's weren't, right? Yes. Yes. Yes, only he and she. Mm -hmm. Yes, so only for I, he, she, and it, okay? Solamente mm -hmm. para eso vamos a utilizar nosotros was. Wasn't. Was or wasn't, was correct. Was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Solamente para eso, para los demás vamos a utilizar were, okay? So you were, they were, and so on, okay? That is the way, guys. Okay? De acuerdo. Vamos a hacer una cosa por acá, guys. Vamos a... Se lo voy a mostrar para que lo hagamos. Esto es parte de las actividades que ustedes tienen que hacer, okay? Vaya. Eh, permítanme un instante. Va, aquí está. A compartir el sonido también, por si acaso. All right, guys. So here we have, uh, these are the activities that you guys need to complete, okay? Probably some of you already did all of these activities, but for the ones who didn't do it yet, we are going to do it right now, okay? So uh, we have these questions here, and we need to choose the correct answer, okay? So number one, it says, choose the best response to this question. Did she play soccer in high school? We have three options. So in this case, we need to choose the right option for this. Vaya, tenemos tres opciones acá. Si se fijan, son bien parecidas, ¿verdad? Entonces, ¿cuál es la respuesta correcta y por qué? Vamos a ver. Uh, Okay, so which is the correct answer? Let's see. This is number two. Number, number two. two. Okay, and why? Why is it number two? Um, eh, we use did mm -hmm. and negative mm -hmm. and verb is uh, eh, the form natural. Okay, very good. No. Thank you. Yes, mm -hmm. the, the verb should be in the base form, okay? Base form. The base okay. form, very good. Thank you so much, Cecilia, that is correct. So we are using the negative here. We are using the auxiliary in this case. And because of that, the verb is in the base form, okay? No changes to the verb. That is something that we were saying yesterday. So that is the reason why this is the correct answer. Eh, si ustedes se fijan, tenemos eh, otras opciones acá, pero eh, en este caso están gramaticalmente incorrectas, ¿verdad? Esta dice, didn't play it, ¿ok? Nosotros dijimos que cuando tenemos el auxiliar, el verbo va en la forma base. Como estaba diciendo Cecilia, no lo vamos a cambiar. In y, present. Eh, in present, right. Yeah, it should be in present. Podemos decir en presente, infinitivo, o podemos decir eh, en la forma base, ¿de acuerdo? Sin cambios. Entonces, eh, la tercera está mal porque el orden no es el correcto, ¿de acuerdo? Es el sujeto, luego es didn't, y luego el verbo. Entonces acá está mal, ¿verdad? Porque soccer está después de she. So that is the reason why that is not the right answer, ¿ok? So let's continue, guys. Then number two. It says, choose the best response to this question. When did you graduate from college? Aquí tenemos tres opciones. Vamos a ver. So which is the correct answer and why? 
two. Uh, I the second. Think, the second one. I think, uh, uh, the first one. What? I the first one because I don't know. If I'm... Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, Juan, but uh, your sound is breaking, so I couldn't understand what you said. So can you please say it again? Okay. okay. Uh, uh, for me, I think it's, it's because they say it's because it's specific, they say 2005. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's in the past, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm I wrong. Mm -hmm. So you think that it's number three in this case? Number two. The first one. The okay. bear is it the... Okay, vamos a ver. Eh, Sara, ¿cuál es para usted? ¿Y por qué? La segunda. Um, All right. No voy a decir en español la segunda porque... <laughs> Vamos a contestar uh -huh. el, como el, uh -huh. hacer, digamos, poner en pasado graduación. I graduated from college. Y, yeah. ajá, ajá, porque, digamos, en la, en la primera uh -huh. no, se, no se ha puesto en pasado. Correcto. Graduate, no sé. Y right. en la otra, en la última, lleva el DIT y también le pone el ED, que está incorrecto, porque si ya lleva el DIT, mm -hmm. ya no tendría que poner el ED ahí en el en pasado, en correcto. Grado. Ok, uh -huh. very good. Por eso es la segunda. So, the second one, Sara, thank you. So, you need to say, uh, yeah, in this case, I graduated from college in 2005. Ok. Can you say it, mm -hmm. Sara, please? Vamos a tratar de practicar. Hola. ¿Te puede decirlo, por favor? I, 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 ¿cómo? Dígame otra vez cómo se I dice la I graduated. I graduated from mm -hmm. college is 20... 2005. 2005. Oh, bueno. sí, ¿lo no puede se puede decir, decir así como podemos decir 20, 22, ahí, digamos aquí, 2005, así, mm -hmm. 20... Sí, en... Pero ahí, ¿Cómo sería? <laughs> yeah, uh, you, you can say 2005, for example. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. 2005. Um, eh, okay. Normalmente sale como más fácil cuando son dos números, por, por así decirlo, como eh, de más de, de, como, por ejemplo, 2021. En ese caso sale mejor, ¿verdad? Pero cuando es así, eh, como en este caso, 2005, 2002 o cosas así. Yo quizás lo diría más como 2002, 2005, 2006. Eh, así creo que sería mejor en ese caso. Pero también lo puede decir así. 20, uh, 2005, por ejemplo. Y creo que se entendería. Ok, así que, yes. Thank you so much, Sarah. So just like Sarah said, it should be number two. Ok, and why? En este caso está en presente, así que no es ese. Ok. El número dos está en pasado, que es como la pregunta está formulada. ¿De acuerdo? Dice, when did you graduate from college? So, I graduated from college in 2005. Este de acá, eh, en algunas ocasiones, guys, eh, pueden ustedes ver tal vez ese caso como I did graduated from college. Lo pueden ver así, pero eh, no es como digamos, para responder a una pregunta. Puede que sea válido en algunas ocasiones, pero es como para hacer énfasis, ¿ok? Eh, digamos de que alguien le dice a ustedes, uh, you didn't graduate from college. You can say, I did graduate from college. Yo sí me gradué de la universidad, ¿ok? Estamos como diciendo, yo sí, como dándole énfasis a que sí hicimos algo. Entonces, en algunas ocasiones, eh, se puede utilizar, pero como para hacer énfasis, no para contestar, como en este caso. ¿Ok? Solamente se los quería decir porque alguna vez puede que lo escuchen y algunas veces sí es válido en ese contexto. ¿De acuerdo? So I did graduate from college. Estoy diciendo, sí, yo sí me gradué. 
All right, so then we have a sentence number three, and it says, I grew up in Houston, Texas. So, in este caso, tenemos que hacer lo opuesto. We need to do the opposite, okay? We have the answer, and we need to choose the correct uh, question in this case. So, which one is the correct question in this case, guys? The first one. one. Where the did you one. grow up? Okay. Where did you grow up? Okay. Where you grow up? Where did you grow up? Okay. And why? Why number one? Because the auxiliary verb is already in, in past simple. Very good. Very good. That is correct. So in this case, we have the the auxiliary verb, and then the verb should be in the simple uh, present. Okay. <laughs> Así que esta es la correcta, guys. Muy bien. Muy buen trabajo. Y vamos con la número cuatro. Excelente, guys. Muy bien. Number four, it says, I began to study English two years ago. Okay, it's the same thing. We need to choose the correct question in this case. So which one is it? The first one. The first one. When did you begin? First one. That is correct. So it's the same thing that before, right? When did you begin? Okay. Muy bien, guys. Y la última. Ya terminamos. This is choose the best response to this question. Did you have a pet when you were a child? Okay, ¿cuál sería la respuesta en este caso? The third one. The three. Number three. three. Number three, okay. Okay. Very good, and why? Because, because it's a yes no question. question. Mm -hmm. It's a yes mm. no question. Just no question. That is correct. So yes, I did, or no, I didn't. Okay, very good. Vamos a enviarlos. Y ahí está, todas están correctas. Así que muy buen trabajo, guys. Estos son parte de las actividades que ustedes tienen que hacer. Eh, imagino que ya todos pudieron acceder, ¿correcto? Ayer creo que alguien tenía problemas. No sé si era Patricia que tenía problemas ayer pero creo que ya se lo solucionaron. Así sí, que... ya todo en orden. Excelente, muy bien, Patricia. Me alegra mucho saber eso. De acuerdo, entonces eh, vamos a avanzar, guys. Vamos a pasar al siguiente tema. Ok. Permítame un instante nada más. Vamos a cambiar de pantalla. Muy bien. Okay. Very good. Okay, so then, guys, we're going to talk about something different this time. And we are going to be talking about the uh, this uh, expression used to, okay? So, used to, tal como está acá, used to, okay? So, when are we going to use used to? We use used to plus the infinitive to talk about a past situation that is no longer true, okay? It tells us that there was a repeated action or a state in the past, which has now changed. We use the expression to talk about habits or repeated actions in the past, which we don't do in the present. We also use it to talk about states in the past, which are no longer true. Okay, entonces guys, vamos a hablar acerca de used to, que está, digamos, un tanto relacionado a lo que hemos visto acerca del pasado, pero en este caso, used to lo utilizamos para hablar acerca de una situación que era verdad en el pasado, pero que ya no lo es, ¿de acuerdo? La traducción al español sería como yo solía hacer algo, ¿ok? Eh, por ejemplo, eh, vamos a ver por aquí quizás algunos ejemplos, pero primero, bueno, se los voy a dejar unos minutos para que ustedes puedan eh, anotar si ustedes gustan. Ok, entonces dice, eh, nosotros utilizamos esta expresión para hablar acerca de hábitos o acciones repetidas en el pasado, las cuales nosotros no hacemos en el presente, ¿de acuerdo? Eh, con el pasado simple hablábamos de algo que pasó en el pasado y terminó en el pasado, pero por lo general no lo utilizamos para acciones repetidas, pero en este caso used to nos ayuda para ese tipo de situaciones, cuando algo solía ser de alguna forma, pero ya ahora ya cambió y ya es diferente, ¿ok? So... Vamos a ver, por aquí, permítanme un instante, guys. Vamos a ver algo para que lo podamos entender mejor. 
Just give me a second, guys. Hi, sorry. everyone. Vaya, este, vamos a escuchar un video. Esto va a ser parte de la eh, como actividad de listening para nosotros. ¿Y qué es lo que vamos a hacer? En el video hay una parte la cual es de una conversación entre dos personas. Entonces, yo quiero que ustedes eh, presten atención y que anoten lo que ustedes puedan entender de la conversación, ¿de acuerdo? Eh, y yo les voy a hacer preguntas acerca de eso. Así que vamos a escuchar el video, se lo voy a compartir. Y luego eh, vamos a practicar un poco, ¿de acuerdo? Vale, entonces lo vamos a reproducir, guys. Y luego de esto vamos a, vamos a discutirlo, ¿ok? So we're going to talk about this. First, I want you guys to listen to the video and also listen to the conversation about used to in the video. Uh, please take notes, and after that, we are going to ask some questions about that, okay? So here we go, guys. Please pay attention. By the end of this class, you'll be able to discuss your childhood habits using used to. Let me give you a couple of examples. When I was a kid, I used to be very messy, but now I'm very neat. I used to have a lot of hobbies, but now I don't have any free time. I didn't used to follow politics, but now I read the newspapers every day. You'll also listen to a short conversation, which illustrates how this topic is used. Let me get started by presenting some structure. As I mentioned, what we're going to do is we're going to try to become familiar with the usage of used to. And in this class, what we're going to do is we're going to become familiar with making positive statements and negative statements using used to. So here are a couple of examples that we want to learn. I used to collect comic books. I didn't used to collect anything but now I collect art. Um, and I'm just borrowing the examples that are here, but of course I'll give more details about this in just one second. But the first thing that I would like to do at this time is that I would like to have you listen to a conversation and you will learn how this topic is used. And after that, I'm going to start explaining how to structure these sentences together. So let's do that right now. Let's listen to that conversation that I'm talking about. Thanks for taking the time to speak with me, Jerry. Oh, it's my pleasure. You have a beautiful accent. Where did you grow up? I grew up in England, in a city called Brighton. Were you popular when you were growing up? Not really. I wasn't unpopular, but I wasn't in the popular crowd at school. I had a nice group of friends, though. How did you like school? Oh, I loved school. I was a great student. My mother actually taught at my primary school. I always thought that was terrific. What about your free time as a child? Did you have a hobby? I used to love to draw. Later I learned to paint, and I still do that. Actually, I have some paintings in a gallery right now. That's impressive. Well, it's a very small exhibit, but it's something I really enjoy. Did you have a favorite game when you were growing up? I used to play video games a lot as a kid. The video games then were very different from the games now. I didn't have a favorite, though. I liked a lot of them. What about a favorite place? Hmm, my favorite place. I used to go to a summer camp in Ireland. I loved that. I got to go horseback riding almost every day. Do you still go to Ireland? No, not very often. De acuerdo, guys. Uh, all right, so guys, uh, do you want to listen to the conversation one more time? Or no? Uh, yes, please. Yes. 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 yes, I do. Okay, yes. let's listen to the conversation one more time, okay? So please pay attention. Take notes because I'm going to ask you about this, okay? So I'm going to, I'm just going to rewind the video so we can listen to the conversation one more time, okay? So here we go. Start explaining how to structure these sentences together. So let's do that right now. Let's listen to that conversation that I'm talking about. Thanks for taking the time to speak with me, Jerry. Oh, it's my pleasure. You have a beautiful accent. Where did you grow up? I grew up in England in a city called Brighton. Were you popular when you were growing up? Not really. I wasn't unpopular, but I wasn't in the popular crowd at school. I had a nice group of friends, though. How did you like school? Oh, I loved school. I was a great student. My mother actually taught at my primary school. I always thought that was terrific. What about your free time as a child? Did you have a hobby? I used to love to draw. Later I learned to paint, and I still do that. Actually, I have some paintings in a gallery right now. That's impressive. Well, it's a very small exhibit, but it's something I really enjoy. Did you have a favorite game when you were growing up? I used to play video games a lot as a kid. The video games then were very different from the games now. I didn't have a favorite, though. 
I liked a lot of them. What about a favorite place? Hmm, my favorite place. I used to go to a summer camp in Ireland. I loved that. I got to go horseback riding almost every day. Do you still go to Ireland? No, not very often. Okay, there we go. All right, guys. Um, okay. So we have the conversation between two people and it seems like they are just uh, getting to know each other, okay? So one of them is asking question. Uh, well, the man is asking question uh, to the young lady about situations that happened in the past, okay? So what were you able to, what were you able to listen from the conversation, guys? What can you tell me about it? Vamos a ver, eh, si alguien quiere decir algo, uh, levante la mano, por favor. Okay. Para que sea más ordenado. Okay, so Juan, Juan wants to participate. Go ahead, Juan. Uh, okay, uh, they asking, the guy, he asking uh, to her um, uh, when she woke up, mm -hmm. if uh, she was, uh, no, uh, uh, what is the, the favor, uh, the favor uh, again a uh, hobby mm -hmm. but yes. in the uh, his answer was a video game but mm -hmm. but even she's she's she told to him uh but now the current video game he doesn't like okay right mm -hmm. that is correct yes very good and, very good one. Uh, the 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 accent from here is uh, amazing. The mm -hmm. accent, the English accent. Yes, right, <laughs> right. Yes, that's something that he said. He said that he loves her accent. Okay, accent. The accent, yeah. Accent. Mm -hmm. okay. Very good, very good. Thank you so much, Juan. Very good. Yeah. Vamos a ver. Ahora tenemos a Dora. Vamos a ver qué quiere decirnos. Dora o Alicia, cómo le gusta más. Alicia, please. Alicia, de acuerdo. Okay, Alicia, please go ahead. Okay, I understand he says she her accent is very good. Mm -hmm. uh, he he asked her where she learned English. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Only that. Only that. Okay. Very good. Thank you so much, Alicia. I appreciate that. Muchas gracias, Alicia. Uh, Vamos. Uh, uh, and, and actually, uh, the lady. Uh, uh, she's a uh, painting in the gallery. That is correct. Right. Yes, she said something about that. She says that she likes to paint. It, she yeah. said that she used to like to draw, but now uh, she likes to paint, and that she has some paintings in the uh, gallery. Uh, I think she said. But I have, I have a question. What is the difference? If I can say the painting, you can can be the same with the masterpiece. Uh, what What do you mean? Uh, this is my question. If mm -hmm. you had one painting, mm -hmm. one famous painting, can be mm -hmm. the same uh, masterpiece or is it different? Different mean masterpiece. I know masterpiece, but you yes. can compare. Uh. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I mean, uh, I think that there are like different expressions. So you can talk about, uh, let's say a painting. If it is a really good painting, then uh. it can be considered a masterpiece. So, for yes. example, uh, if in some uh, one painting made it from Picasso, example. That's true. Yes. Okay. Yes, that is correct. Okay, very good. Thank you so much, Juan. Eh, vamos a continuar, eh, Patricia. Well, she said mm -hmm. she was, well, uh, mm -hmm. she is British. Mm -hmm. And in the school, she was, she wasn't popular, but she wasn't unpopular too. Mm -hmm. uh, she was a good student and mm -hmm. she used to love school. That is That's correct. That's what I remember. Very good. Very good job, Patricia. Muy bien. Muy bien. Es correcto. Eso es lo que dijo al principio. Uh, so she said that she grew up in England. Uh, she said that she wasn't that popular, but she wasn't unpopular either. And she said that she loved school. That's what she said. So very good. Very good job, Patricia. Okay, vamos entonces con Abigail. 
please go ahead, Abigail. Uh, basically, is the is the same that my partner said. Mm -hmm. I remember she is from England. Mm -hmm. Um, she you she used to be um popular, mm -hmm. uh on on a high school, mm -hmm. and she used to play video games. That is correct. Very good. Very good job, Abigail. Muy bien. Excelente, guys. Me gusta mucho cómo lo estamos haciendo. Muy buen trabajo. Sigamos así. Creo que al final eh, casi todos tomamos más que todo la parte del principio, ¿verdad? Pero está bien, no hay ningún problema. Aquí se trata de practicar, ¿de acuerdo? Ok, vamos entonces con Joel y a continuación Natalie. Así que Joel, please go ahead. Ok. Uh, I didn't hear very well, but I hear a little bit. Ok. He, he is making an interview to the girl. Mm -hmm. Ok. And uh, he, uh, he asked to the girl a lot of questions about her career. Mm -hmm. I think that she is a, a, an actress. Excuse me. In, he asking her about oh. where no was okay. he was her, asking. Mm -hmm. com, no, no puedo decir, pero um, about her her city. Mm -hmm. her, okay. About her hobbies. Uh -huh. And Okay. Anymore. Okay. Very good. Very good, Joel. Very good job. Okay. So yes, he was asking uh, questions to the lady. Uh, he was asking questions like where uh, she grew up, uh, her habits, and also other things like that. So very good. Very good. Okay. Vamos entonces ahora con Natalie. Natalie, please go ahead. I don't remember well, but I think that she said something about going to Ireland when she going was a kid Ireland. to a mm -hmm. to a camp, I guess. I mm -hmm. think a summer camp. Yes, mm -hmm. that's all. Okay, okay, very good, Natalie. Um, so that's all you got. All right, very good. Yeah, so that's true. Uh, at the end, uh, she said that she used to go for a summer camp in Ireland, okay? And she said that uh, she doesn't go anymore, okay? Muy bien, guys. Entonces, eh, si ustedes se fijan, esta conversación es utilizando el pasado y también utilizando used to, okay? Entonces, ella dice de que ella solía ir a un campamento de verano en Irlanda, pero que ya no lo hace. Lo voy a poner aquí para que lo escuchen otra vez have a favorite game when you were growing up? I used to play video games a lot as a kid. The video games then were very different from the games now. I didn't have a favorite, though. I liked a lot of them. What about a favorite place? Hmm, my favorite place. I used to go to a summer camp in Ireland. I loved that. I got to go horseback riding almost every day. Do you still go to Ireland? No, not very often. D'accordo. Entonces dice que ella solía ir a Irlanda, a este campamento de verano, pero que ahora pues ya no lo hace, ¿de acuerdo? No, al menos no con mucha frecuencia, eso es lo que dice, no, I don't go uh, very often, that's what she said in the conversation, ¿ok? So, very good job, guys. Uh, do you have any questions about the conversation, anything that you would like to say? Antes de que continuemos. Any question, guys? Any questions, concerns for me? No questions. Okay. Bueno, vamos a continuar. Eh, ya casi se nos termina el tiempo, guys. Pero vamos a solamente ver esto rapidito. Vaya, acá, eh, este es el tema que nosotros vamos a estudiar eh, tanto el día de ahora como mañana. Entonces, eh, used to lo utilizamos para hablar acerca de algo que hacíamos regularmente en el pasado, pero que no lo hacemos ya. Ok. ¿Y cuál es la estructura que vamos a utilizar? Vamos a utilizar el sujeto, used to, y luego el verbo en la forma base. ¿Perdón? 
Okay, so it is, I used to be very messy, but now I'm very neat, okay? Entonces, ustedes lo van a ver bastante en esta, en esta forma, como si fueran dos oraciones, en las cuales nosotros decimos, yo solía hacer algo, pero ahora yo hago, digamos, otra cosa. Ya no hago eso, sino que hago otra cosa en, en ese lugar. Entonces, por ejemplo, acá, eh, en la primera oración, que es una oración afirmativa, está diciendo que solía ser muy desordenado, pero ahora soy muy ordenado. O sea, sería como lo opuesto. Ok, eh, si queremos hacer preguntas, eh, utilizamos prácticamente la misma estructura que estábamos viendo anteriormente, en la cual solo cambiamos el orden. Si ustedes se fijan, used to está en el pasado, ok? No es use, sino que es used to, ok? Está en el pasado. Entonces, si queremos hacer una pregunta, vamos a utilizar el auxiliar did al inicio. So, did you used to collect things, ok? Y si se fijan, ya cuando utilizamos el auxiliar, used to cambia al presente, ¿ok? Que estaba en pasado y aquí pasa al presente, ¿de acuerdo? Y estamos hablando acerca de cosas que solíamos hacer, ¿de acuerdo? Algo que pasaba eh, con regularidad en el pasado, pero que ahora ya no pasa, ¿ok? Eh, then, bueno, vamos a continuar. Eh, se lo voy a reproducir unos instantes el video, nada más. Vamos a ver, escuchamos la... Let me start by explaining this chart. First of all, let me just get the concept out of the way. Used to refers to something that you regularly did in the past, but you don't do that anymore. And let me get started by explaining positive statements. So what I'm going to do at this time, I'm just going to put the formula here and we're going to try to make sense of the positive statements that are outlined there for us. So what we're going to do at this time is we're, we're going to borrow that first example that you see there. So we have I is the subject and then this follows used to and then we're going to have the verb. It's going to be in the present. So I used to and in this case be. Very messy, but uh, now um, very neat. There we go. So the subject in our sentence is I. I'm going to go ahead and play with the colors right now. Uh, this follows used to. And then we have the verb to be. Now, this just happens to be the verb that we're using in this example, but it's not always going to be the verb to be. And then finally, we're going to have some sort of complement that um, uh, in order to finish that idea there. And so now let's try to make a couple of more examples. So I'm going to mention some of my own so I used to and I'm gonna say I used to play a lot of sports when I was a kid um, and well we follow the structure um, we have a subject then this follows used to then we have the verb in the present tense and then we have some sort of complement at the end de acuerdo. Entonces, guys, eh, acá está la estructura, como se les estaba mencionando, eh, para hacer oraciones del tipo positivas, ¿ok? So we can make positive statements. We are going to use this structure. So the subject, then used to, then the verb in the present, and then a complement, ¿ok? So that is the structure that we are going to be using. Um, ok, guys. Uh, so for today, we are just going to leave it like this. This is going to be just the introduction to the topic. We're going to continue tomorrow. We're going to see uh, more examples. We're also going to see uh, other structures that we are going to use. And we are going to have some time so we can practice tomorrow, okay? Entonces, eh, por ahora lo vamos a dejar así, guys. Eh, mañana vamos a continuar. Okay. Eh, vamos a practicar un poco mañana que siempre me interesa que practiquemos creo que es lo que más me gusta que podamos practicar así que mañana vamos a dedicar un buen rato para eso así que no sé si tienen ustedes alguna pregunta antes de que nos marchemos ok, no questions, very good ok guys, well uh, I just want to thank you again guys for being here And I will see you guys tomorrow between 8 and 9 p.m. Okay, so I hope you guys have a great evening. I will see you tomorrow, guys. Okay?
Okay. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Bye bye. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night.